Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today as we discuss the basics of link building, conversion URLs, and default offer URLs. We'll start with a brief presentation on the basics of these subjects, and then I'll show you on my test system different ways that you can apply what we're going to learn during the presentation. I encourage you to follow along on your own screen if you can. Um, that includes while I'm building the links and building offers, so that way you can see this in action on your side as well. If you have any questions while the presentation is going on, please feel free to go ahead and use our question panel or chat panel, and I'll answer those as time allows. And if you have any comments about the material we cover or the overall presentation, I encourage you to fill out our post-webinar form so we can continue to adjust our training to meet your needs. With that, I'll go ahead and get started. Once again, this is the third class in a series of three. The first class is the basics of tracking and offer creation. The second class is reports and troubleshooting. And of course, the third class is the basics of link building. If you did miss one of the two prior classes, they are held every two weeks on Mondays, or Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and they're held twice a day. So what is link building? Well, when we talk about link building, we're talking about creating offer URLs, so that way we can pass information to advertisers and advertiser landing pages. We're creating tracking links for your affiliates, so that way they can receive or add sub-IDs and information that they need upon click. And we're creating conversion URLs for your advertiser to pass conversion information to your ad network, as well as the conversion URLs that your affiliates use to pass conversion information to their third-party networks. So when we're building our links, whether that be default offer URLs, conversion URLs, or tracking links, we're using macros. And macros are basically placeholders for information to be passed between systems. They're also called sub-IDs and parameters, or other specific IDs such as device IDs, advertiser IDs, etc. Most oftentimes macros are dynamic, and what I mean by that is they're going to be placeholders for specific information. And then upon click, the macro is actually replaced with the actual information. So for example, if one of my macros was IP, then that macro of I and P would be replaced by the actual IP address of the user. If you want a full list of our macros, the Has Offers macros, you can go to help.tune.com and just enter passing optional parameters into your search bar and you'll pull up our links on conversion parameters as well as passing optional parameters to your advertisers and affiliates. It's a great list and very comprehensive. I encourage you to take a look at that. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is creating offer URLs. And this is when we're going to pass information to our advertiser that they either require or that we want passed back upon conversion. So when we're creating our offer URLs, the first thing we need to do is know our offer and know our advertiser requirements. We need to know what they want passed to them, if anything. And that could be your affiliate ID, again, the IP of the user, it could be the country in which they're coming from, or device information. We want to match up the has offers macros with the advertiser macros. So if we know what the advertiser is looking for, we want to make sure that the has offers system has a macro that is associated with that value and can be replaced by that value. So for example, if my advertiser wanted me to pass my affiliate ID, my transaction ID, in the sub ID one and sub ID two values to the landing page, how would I do this? So I've got a little example down here that immediately illustrates that we're taking an offer URL. The advertiser included the sub ID and sub ID two values, and we're replacing their placeholders with our information. So if I go to my other screen here, I've got this written out in a bit more detail. So let's say our advertiser has given us a URL of HTTPS, help.tune.com, an S1, an S2, an S3. 
This is typically what you'll receive from the advertiser. Sometimes they'll add information after the equal sign to let you know what they're looking for. Other times they'll leave it blank and just tell you we need to receive these parameters. So in this case, the advertiser wants to receive the affiliate ID, the transaction ID, and the IP of the click. They've told us our placeholders are S1, S2, and S3. So now when I enter my default offer URL, I'm going to say that our S1 parameter equals the macro affiliate ID. And now remember upon click, that macro will be replaced by the actual affiliate ID that's promoting the offer on your behalf. Same goes for the S2 and S3 placeholders. We've decided that S2 is going to equal transaction ID and S3 is going to equal IP. So now our offer URL is created. We have our advertiser informational macros along with the has offers macros that will send the information to the landing page of the advertiser. And once again, anytime you want to send information to the landing page of the advertiser or the advertisers requesting information to be sent to them, you want to include that in your default offer URL and any additional landing page that you're using. Once we've created our offer URL, we now need to create our conversion URL to make sure that we receive any information we need back upon conversion. In order to do that, we want to make note of the parameters that are included in the offer URL that we just created. So when I say parameters, I'm talking about the has offers parameters and the advertiser parameters. So we want to remember that we used S1 for affiliate ID, S2 for transaction ID, and S3 for IP. We want to mirror these parameters so that way our advertiser is sending us back the has offers information and we can receive it correctly. One of the best ways to do this is to use the conversion URL sub ID builder, which I'll show you in one second. So again, taking our example where the advertiser wanted the IP, transaction ID, and affiliate ID, and we created our offer URL, making S1 equals affiliate ID, S2 equals transaction ID, and S3 equals IP, we can now create a conversion URL, which we provide to our advertiser, and they can send the information back to us. Now, notice in my conversion URL, I simply added and transaction ID equals S2. Now, the reason why I added and transaction ID equals S2 is because upon click, we're already going to capture the affiliate ID that's promoting the offer, and we're gonna capture the IP of the user that clicked that tracking. If you had other parameters in the offer URL that you wish to be passed back, such as device ID or country, you can simply add that to your conversion URL by including the macros from your advertiser first. So if our country was S4, and then your has offers identifier. Now notice in our default offer URL, we have S1 equals affiliate ID, S2 equals transaction ID, S3 equals IP. So when we build our conversion URL, we want to mirror those parameters, which I didn't do the first time, and I'm doing now. So now we've made it so that everything is mirrored and our advertiser knows that we're looking for the transaction ID associated with the S2, the country associated with the S4, and any other information we choose. Now, if we're using a global conversion URL, we would need to remove the offer ID portion. 
I'm going to go into that further. But as you can see here, I just wanted to show you that with our global conversion URL, it's the same theory that we mirror the parameters from the offer URL to the conversion URL. So let's take a look at this in action. If I go to my Manage Offers section, I want to look at an offer that has different parameters. So I'm going to take a look at my offer URL here. And as you can see, we've got our URL and a parameter from the advertiser. Place this here. So this is the advertiser's URL. And in this case, they wanted to use transaction ID equals transaction ID. So if I click on my tracking link, I should see that the transaction ID is populated in the actual URL from click. So once the redirection takes place, I've got my full default offer URL, as you saw when I edited my offer. I've got my transaction ID macro, and I've got my actual transaction ID that was replaced on click. Now for my conversion, you notice that my URL says transaction ID equals transaction ID. That's because it doesn't take the parameters from the offer URL. You do have to adjust it yourself. And once I enter the correct transaction ID in that postback URL, I get a success equals true, which means that the conversion was logged. Now, when you're testing your offers and working with your advertisers and using different parameters, you do want to provide your test link to the advertiser so that they can test the link on their side and ensure that they're receiving the parameters that they need. The way I just tested is a very basic manual test, and it doesn't go through the advertiser system necessarily as I'm firing the conversion URL to myself. So it is a good way to test the functionality of your conversion URLs. However, not a good way to test if your advertiser can grab that information and pass it back to you. Now, when we're finished creating our offer and our offer URL, and we've given our advertiser the conversion URL, we now need to make sure that our affiliates can track and use sub, sub IDs and placeholders on their side to receive information in their third party system. Similar to working with your advertiser, you do want to work with your affiliate so that you know their macros and their requirements. A lot of times affiliates will send you a postback URL and request that you enter the appropriate macros in that URL so that it can be fired and received by their system. It's a good time to have that conversation about what's required and what type of macros and information they're looking for. When we're creating tracking links for our affiliates on the has offer side, we use AFSUB as a placeholder. Now, what I mean by that is anytime you create a tracking link and your affiliate is going to use a dynamic macro from their third party system, similar to what we were looking at with our advertisers and their sub ID one, sub ID two, and sub ID three, we use AF sub, AF sub two, and AF sub three. It's always advisable to use the affiliate tracking link builder and to educate your affiliates to do so as well. This is especially important if you're using encrypted tracking links, SEO friendly links, or tiny URLs, as those create a hash out of any sub ID, offer ID, and affiliate ID. And if the affiliate just adds their sub ID after that hash, 
it doesn't get reported in the Hazopper system and doesn't flow through to their conversion URL. If you use the sub ID builder, it will change the hash to include those values and make sure that they receive the information that they're looking for. Now, when I say the affiliate tracking link builder, what I'm talking about is our generate tracking section found here. Now, this allows me to select an affiliate, which generates a tracking link. And now I can add a sub ID. Or more sub IDs. And notice it automatically appends as sub equals the affiliate macro that I entered. The affiliate has access to this tracking link builder through the affiliate publisher interface. So if you do allow them to grab tracking links on their own, it's a great way and time to educate them to use that builder. That way they can make sure that they're adding their macros correctly. So we can keep building up to five affiliate sub IDs. And notice each time I go to a next, the next sub ID, it's building the link as I go and adding F sub two and F sub three, because it knows I've already used the first F sub, the second F sub, and so on. Once I take this link, it should be populated by the affiliate system as we're using their macros to populate information. Notice it automatically redirected to the advertiser URL because we're not capturing that information, the affiliate is. So any information that was captured in those macros upon that click is stored in the has offers ad server as well as should be stored in the affiliate ad server now upon conversion i can pull that information back and we should see that on our conversion report in our affiliate sub id columns so i'm going to fire our conversion url and we'll continue talking for a moment while the conversion makes it into our system. So now that we've built out our tracking link and we've educated our affiliates about how to use the affiliate tracking link builder, we now need to make sure that we're sending the information to the affiliate conversion URL correctly. Now again, similar to working with advertisers and your default offer URL as well as your advertiser conversion URL, you're going to mirror your parameters or macros. We want to add these in the third party conversion pixel section so that way they fire upon conversion. And we want to test afterwards using our test tool. This is all a shared responsibility with you and the affiliate, meaning we want to know the affiliate conversion requirements. We want to know how they're structuring our tracking link if we didn't provide it to them. We want to make sure we're mirroring the parameters from that tracking link and putting it into the conversion URL. So let's take a look at our conversion report very quickly, see if my conversion came through. And before we look, I'm going to include some of the other affiliate sub IDs so that way we can see what the affiliate was trying to capture on click and if we were able to capture that. So notice in my report, we have the macros that I included on my click. However, there's no information behind them because again, it was the affiliate system's responsibility to populate those. Therefore, when doing a test like I just did, it's going to come across as the raw values. And if your affiliate does not want to use dynamic macros, they can also add static values 
and those will come across the conversion report as well. So let's take a look at an affiliate tracking link request for a specific offer. Our affiliate has requested that we provide them a tracking link, which includes the transaction ID, the affiliate ID, and the IP macros from their system. So if we take that tracking link request and we go to our offer, in this case, we're looking at offer ID two, which is paused. My apologies for the delay. So let's choose our affiliate. And remember, our affiliate had requested transaction ID, affiliate ID, and IP. So I'm going to use my link builder to add three sub IDs. And update. And now I've got my link including our AF sub placeholders and affiliate macros requested. Now, our affiliate has said we need to add a postback URL so that way we receive conversions. Here's the postback URL that we provide you, and we need to receive back the transaction ID, affiliate ID, and IP. So since we added those to the tracking link already, we know that they're associated with the F sub, F sub two, and F sub three values. So what we would do is we would take our post back and replace the empty space after the equal with the F sub values that correspond with the information they're requesting. Once I've created the affiliate post pack, making sure that I've included our dynamic parameters. I can go and add that to our third party conversion URL section by going to affiliates, conversion pixels URLs. Now, once there, I can click add, choose the affiliate I wish to add this pixel or post pack to as well as the offer I wish to add it to. I then choose the type of URL it is, whether it be a pixel or postback. Enter exactly as I had it structured and save. Once I save, we can then test and view the URL with an affiliate test link. Now it's very important that you get a test link from the affiliate third party system. If you use the has offers test link that you just generated, it'll work to log a conversion in your has offers network. It will not fire a conversion to your affiliate. It has to be the affiliate test link just like when working with your advertiser, you would use your test link to test the offer with your advertiser. Now, I mentioned earlier global postback URLs. 
Global Postback URLs are a great way to use one conversion URL for all your offers. Now, usually this is with individual advertisers, so you would have a global postback URL with each individual advertiser you work with. Only postback based offers can use global postback URLs. Conversion pixels cannot be global because it does rely on matching up with the cookie that's placed in the user's browser. Since the cookie in the user's browser is always offer and affiliate specific, the conversion cookie cannot be global. Now, global postbacks are not saved in the system. So when you create a global postback, you're going to want to save it and put it in an area where you can reference it later. Meaning if you ever have discrepancies or issues receiving conversions from your advertiser, we're gonna ask you what conversion URL you're using and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have that saved so we can make sure it's correct. In order to make your postback global, you remove the offer ID portion of the postback URL. You can include any macros after that, including transaction ID and affiliate ID, but a true global postback would not have the offer ID. You only want to provide global postbacks to advertisers. You do not want to provide them to affiliates because then affiliates will be able to log conversions in your system fraudulently. Another issue with global postback URLs is that you can't use them with encrypted conversion tracking as the encrypted hash that's created when you use that type of tracking includes the offer ID. So let's take a look at creating a couple global postback URLs from some of our examples that we used earlier. Now, again, all we're removing is the offer ID. Any other parameter can stay. So if I take my conversion URL that I'm going to provide to my advertiser with the offer ID 2, and I remove that offer ID 2, I'm left with FLSR, question mark, transaction ID. It's very simple. Again, it's just removing that offer ID. Everything else is shifted over and can stay. Once again, you can't use global pixels, and unfortunately, you can't use global postback URLs if you're using encrypted conversion tracking. So let's take a look at some other link types, including deep links. So Deep links are a great way to allow your affiliates to link to a specific website within an offer. So if your offer, let's say, is a catalog and you are promoting shoes, purses, and belts, but your affiliate has a purses blog and only wants to send traffic to that specific page, you can enable the deep linking function use the link building tool, and allow your affiliates to direct to that specific page. So if we go back to our offer, and we take a look at our settings, we want to make sure that deep linking is enabled. So first we're going to go to our tracking settings section, and we're going to look for our deep link setting and set that to enable. Now next we have the option to copy static parameters to deep links. And what that means is, do you want to take parameters that are not dynamic, meaning aren't going to be replaced on click, from your default offer URL and add them to the tracking link? This allows your affiliates to see that information should they need to, and allows it to be sent to your has offers reports. Right now I'm going to leave that disabled and save. Now, for our example, if this offer were leading me to my full catalog page where users were able to choose which section they want to go to, and I have my affiliate that just wants to advertise purses, 
I can use my deep linking tool and enter the URL that goes to the purse page. Now notice once I update this, I've got all my parameters, including my offer ID, my affiliate ID, and then I append an and URL equals, which is then telling this link that this is the final destination. In order to have two links within one link, the second link needs to be encoded, and our system does that automatically for you. This is why I suggest using that link builder tool, as it will make sure that the link is structured correctly and your affiliates have access to this as well. Now, if I wanted to add sub IDs to this, you can still do that. And it alters the link to make sure that the sub ID is included. Notice it puts it before the end URL because we're making sure that our tracking link is intact first, and then the secondary page comes after. You want to test your deep links or have your affiliates test deep links to make sure that they're working. If the deep link isn't working, it's possible you could lose traffic. Your affiliate may think the offer's not working, etc. Since this is an affiliate-based tool, I do put the responsibility on the affiliate. However, it's easy for you to test it as well, so long as you know the URL that your affiliate wants to direct to. Another feature that has offers allows you to use is encrypted tracking links and encrypted conversion URLs. Now these are great fraud prevention tools because it's going to create a hash out of your values and not allow any user to grab it from the headers of your browser or see the information. Now for encrypted tracking links, this is actually a global setting, whereas encrypted conversion pixels are an offer by offer setting. So in order to set your encrypted tracking links to on, you would need to go to your company tracking settings and enable that there. When you do use encrypted tracking links, you need to use the sub ID builder or the link builder when adding sub IDs, otherwise it will not work correctly because those need to be included into the hash. So for our example, we're going to go to our company, customize application, tracking, and we're going to look for our encrypted tracking links setting. We'll set that to enabled, and then we'll save. Now every offer in my application is going to use encrypted tracking links. Another important piece of information with encrypted tracking links, SEO friendly links, and tiny URLs is that once you create them, it does take 15 to 20 minutes for the link to save on all of our ad servers globally, so the link may not work for that first 20 minutes. Make sure your affiliates know this, make sure it's just a propagation delay, and once it's propagated on all servers, it will continue to work. So if I go back to my offer and I select my affiliate, notice now instead of my offer ID and affiliate ID, I have this hash. When I enter my sub IDs, they're going to change the hash and encrypt the value so that way it's hidden and malicious parties can't grab it. Again, this is a great way to prevent against fraud, but it is a global offer-wide setting and can cause some difficulties working with advertisers or affiliates if they're not able to work with encrypted tracking links. This is not very common, 
it does redirect automatically to the offer URL. It's just hiding your tracking link. But again, some affiliates may not be able to work with that type of tracking link within their system and may need a regular link. Now, when it comes to encrypted conversion URLs, as I said earlier, this is an offer specific setting. It's not a global setting. So within my offer, I can turn this on and have it enabled for just one offer. The conversion URL, URL is going to replace the offer ID with a hash value. Advertiser sub IDs are not encoded, but you do still want to use the conversion URL builder to add your sub IDs. If I go back to my offer, again, I'm gonna to go to my offer tracking settings, and I'm going to look for my encrypted conversion tracking setting found near the bottom, and set that to enabled. I'll save. And now once I go to look at my conversion URL, notice the AF LSR and the offer ID are gone and replaced by this hash. If I use my conversion sub ID builder, it does not change the hash, it just adds the sub ID value. So the sub IDs don't need to be encrypted upon conversion. However, other parts of the code do. Now House Offers also allows you to use mobile parameters. Mobile parameters are similar to any other parameter that we use within the House Offers system, whether that be in the offer URL or the tracking link. This is an enterprise only feature. And you do want to make sure that you enable your mobile parameters on your reports so that way you can see them once they're captured. Mobile parameters do rely on the affiliate and the advertiser to replace macros with data. Meaning if you're adding the device identifiers or mobile parameters to your tracking link, it's your affiliate's responsibility to replace that information with the actual user device data. If you're adding it to the offer URL and sending it to your landing page, it's going to be the advertiser that's going to capture that data most times in the SDK and replace that macro with the actual data. Now, if you're working with Attribution Analytics, which is our mobile platform, this is all seamlessly integrated and is the best way to work and receive these types of parameters because we've got the systems built together and we make sure that all these are passed upon conversion. So let's take a look at showing these on our reports. The first thing we need to do is make sure that this setting is enabled. So we're going to go to Company, Customize Application, And we'll go to application settings. My apologies, I believe it's offer settings. Third time's the charm. So we go to Company, customize application, tracking. Scroll to the bottom and make sure show mobile tracking parameters are enabled. Once I'm sure they're enabled and I've saved, I can go to my conversion report and I can see the mobile data that I'm able to select and include on my report. I'm also able to go to the mobile stats report and see information directly related to mobile conversions, including models, brands, OS versions, carriers, and the number of clicks, conversions, and impressions coming from those devices. So again, this is an enterprise-only feature. If you are a pro account, 
I do recommend contacting your sales representative and discussing the option to upgrade, especially if you're going to be working with mobile advertisers, if you are a mobile advertiser, or if you're promoting any kind of mobile traffic. Remember to save your links. Again, has offers provides default conversion URLs and tracking links. Those aren't saved in the system. So if you're providing your affiliate with specific tracking links that you're generating, keep a spreadsheet of those links so you can make sure you can refer to them later. Same goes with the conversion URLs. If you're providing advertisers with different parameters and different conversion URL options, you do want to save those someplace so they can be referenced later. If you have issues with receiving conversions, if your affiliate has issues receiving conversions or clicks, we'll need that information and it's a good idea to make sure that they're using the links that you provided originally. Any adjustments, again, are not saved, especially with the conversion URL. Dealing with global conversion postbacks, those are not saved and you want to make sure that you save them elsewhere. And finally, never give out your conversion URLs to your affiliates. You always want to make sure those only go to your advertisers and you save them in a safe, organized manner. That concludes our presentation on creating tracking links, conversion URLs, default offer URLs, and affiliate links. I appreciate your patience with a few of the technical difficulties I had. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the question box or the chat box. I would be happy to answer them now. I do have a few frequently asked questions about general has offers settings, not necessarily link building. So a few of them are some of the settings in my account, my specific test account, don't show up in your account, such as advanced targeting or API whitelist or offer whitelist. Unfortunately, certain functions are only available in enterprise and above account levels. My test account is, a, is an enterprise account. So if you're on a pro account and you do want to have the ability to use payout and revenue groups, advanced targeting, mobile parameters, or two-way API, I definitely recommend reaching out to your sales representative and discussing upgrading options. So we did discuss macros today, and a lot of times we get questions about the availability of certain macros or what macro to use in what situation. If you want a full list that's consistently updated, you can go to help.tune.com and look for the passing optional parameters document, either by searching for pa passing optional parameters or copying down the link I have here. And then what's the best tracking type to use with mobile-based offers? Mobile browsers often block or reject cookies. They have so many privacy functions now that pixel or cookie-based tracking is not reliable. It adds to discrepancies. It adds to issues with the advertiser capturing data and returning conversions. I always suggest using server postback tracking. And I use the attribution analytics platform as well, as we have that seamless integration. So if you have any questions about onboarding, you can contact your sales representative directly. If you have technical support questions, you can contact our support group by emailing support at tune.com. Or if you're an enterprise customer, you can call us at 206-508-1318. We also have our Tune Help, which is at help.tune.com. It has a robust search feature and includes some great getting started articles, offer creation tutorials, etc. And finally, we have our Tune Academy, which I strongly encourage you to visit, which is at academy.tune.com. It allows you to become a qualified user, including a badge that you can add to your LinkedIn profile or email and shows that you've gone through many different modules of the has offer system and or the attribution analytics system and are a qualified user. So now I'll go ahead and give some time for questions from this presentation. It looks like we've got one now. 
and it says, if we are an advertiser just working directly with affiliates, they will still have access only to the links offers we create, correct? Will they be able to create their own links? We want to control the links they use, thanks. So if you do have affiliates that are using the publisher interface and you have offers that are approved for them there, they have the ability to generate their own links. So they can go in there at any time and they can go to the offer and generate a link for themselves. So let's take a look at this really quickly. We'll go to my one of my test affiliates. And first let's take a look at the user because we can limit some permissions. So we can take away their ability to view offers in general. And that would allow you to only provide them links and they wouldn't be able to generate their own links. Now this is a user by user permission. So if you do have affiliates that have multiple users, you'll want to do this with each user. So let's take a look without that permission removed. And if I go to my offers, so I go to offers, browse, search, I'll pick an offer. You can see that the link is already generated for them and it allows them to add sub IDs should they choose. And then they can take that link and do what they want with it. Same can be said for direct links. If you have that enabled, they can add affiliate sources, they can add creative files. Now, if we go back and we change our permissions. Now, some changes do take a few minutes to apply. So it may not work right away since I just made this change but this should remove my ability to go view offers. So this feature is not enabled. It's not letting me go to my offers, so I can't see any offer information. That would be the only way to disable the affiliate link generation. Unfortunately, there's nothing in our settings section that would do that. And so next question, if you do disable the offer management, how do they get links? Do we have to email them to the affiliate? That would be correct. You'd have to provide them somehow. So it would be you generating the links and either messaging them to them, emailing them, writing them on a piece of paper and putting in, in snail mail, uh, whatever you would choose. Absolutely. I'll go ahead and leave it for a few more minutes here if you have any further questions.